Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the show. You are listening to Game Club from Wannabe Critic Productions. Uh, today, we are going to be reviewing Batman Arkham Origins, um, developed by... It just says Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment. I think that's the publisher. But anyways, we'll get to that in a second. I'll, I'll get all the factuals here in a moment. Joining me is uh, Ethan Maestri, a fellow wannabe. How's it going, bro? Hi, everybody. <laughs> Good good to be here i can't wait you know guys ethan told me that this is his favorite batman game of all time it is and i just can't wait to get into the reasons why you know and just really hear ethan get into the nitty-gritty of this game i yeah i can't wait to get into it because you beat you beat it right full disclosure no (laughs) gabe is lying it is not my favorite but we can get into why. Yeah, we can no, get into I'm, to- I'm totally scalping this one. Yeah. Oh, 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 what was that? Scalping. What, what's that? It's a, ter- it, it's, a, it's a term in reference to an individual that says they're going to play a game, but they never end up finishing that game. And yet they feel qualified to talk about it. Oh, are you referring to the, one of the co-hosts a, of Bush League Gaming? A certain someone of a certain podcast that we both yeah. listen to. I'll and name appreciate. drop them. I don't freaking care because those guys <laughs> over there, they do not take their job seriously. <laughs> no, no, and, no. And nothing but you know. love for Ryan. But, you know, I've heard mm. it often enough. I'm like, OK, I'm going to scalp this one. Yeah, <laughs> that there you go, Ryan. It's you're a verb now. <laughs> I might have to, you're I might, an adjective now. <laughs> I might have to make my Twitter return with an insult like meet it with an insult to ryan scalp and i might have to clip this and put it okay. out there you know just for ryan no, I would, i'm just i would yeah that's fine we we love them over there over at bush league they're good dudes i was listening to them uh a couple days ago actually and um you know obviously we keep on we keep on trying to have uh jacob or he, you would, know, on. he was supposed to be on tonight yeah because we're recording punch, kind of punch right after that i know dude and you know why he ditched us you know why he ditched us uh, a concert? Coldplay. I feel slighted. <laughs> I mean, I feel slighted. I'm just, you know, just up front. As Jacob, someone, come, as, can we address him for just a second? Go ahead. You go for it. Coldplay. I, I can't even. No. No. Let's let's move on. <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> um, I, I, in all seriousness, because I, I have seen Coldplay, uh, I went in 2015 with my fiance and it was actually awesome. Like it was actually 2015. Yeah. In 2015. I mean, yeah, that was kind of the, I I liked Coldplay growing up. And then that was kind of like the album that brought me back to like, love them even more. Okay. Cause I'm not a, I'm not a huge pop culture music. What's going on in the biz right now. Have they had a hit in the last two to three years? Okay. No, then no, I don't think so. Okay. And so they just put out a new record and I don't like it at all. Okay, so that's why he's going. Tickets are cheap. Uh, <laughs> shots fired. They're on the. They're on the, they're on they're the decline. On the, they're on their way out. They're about to. It's about to it's be like, the second coming of U two. You know, it's like the, it's like that band that comes through that I see on the marquee for guitars down the street here, and it's like, oh, they were big in the nineties. <laughs> oh, that was thirty years ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they're, they're, they're doing their best to just make it along now. You know. No, in all seriousness, we will we'll have him on in the future for sure over at Punch Counter Punch. Um, that's of course over on the Wanna Be Critic podcast. But this is Game Club, Ethan. No one wants this to hear is. our we're, we're getting we're getting into the weeds of Punch Counter Punch already. You've ruined everything. As How as happens. Yeah. No, I, I it, this feels like a podcast now. Yeah, it really does. It really does, especially a wannabe podcast. Um so Batman Arkham Origins, developed by WB Games Montreal um released in 2013 so this game came out literally the year i graduated high school this game came out (laughs) high school yeah high school um that's kind of wild so metacritic year you were we worked together yeah holy cow that's been a while it has been a while yeah and yeah and this and this game came out then yeah so th- this is interesting because we have played Arkham Knight. Yep. And Arkham Knight came out, what, a couple of years after this one would have come out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yet I, I feel like Origins came out after Arkham Knight. But that's just my that's just been my perception. Yeah. Well, there was this like thing happening on Twitter for a while where people just it's, it's kind of like this, like 
thing where people are saying Attack of the Clones is a good movie. Like there's like this this Twitter uprising where if all of these Gen Zs trying to convince the internet that Attack of the Clones is good. And um, the same thing has been happening with Batman Arkham Origins. It's just, it's it's a travesty. I don't understand like what the movement is about. And full disclosure, I have beaten this game in the past. I beat it one time. Um, I had full intention of beating this game again a second time, but I, I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Um, there comes a point in one young man's life where you just have to admit like when you don't like something and <sighs> so this you, you can't even add this one to your 50 that you were trying for no, earlier in the I, year. I'm not going okay. yeah I'm not going to which okay. destiny has put a huge damper dampener on that <laughs> I'm trying to finish that but I have been I've been slowly doing it I've been you know I finished a couple here and there at a time so we'll get qu- Ethan quit jumping ahead all right you're jumping Sorry. ahead to punch counter punch and it's okay. not time yeah. for that yeah. yet we have to hate on this game for a solid. Do half we not hour. talk about what we've been playing in this game? I guess we don't. Yeah, we not don't, this so. one. Not this one. All right. And uh, you know, I guess it, I guess it is appropriate, really quick, to address something. Uh, at the at the time of this recording, want to be critic productions is a, on a bit of a hiatus. It, it kind of a, I don't know how to how to say it, but it's summer break. Yeah, essentially, you know, we're not stopping completely content. I'm just, I mean, for lack of a better word, I'm just burnt out and my uh, creative endeavors are focused elsewhere right now. Um, but I, we're, there's no intention of stopping any of this. You know, we, we do have to cut back on some stuff, but Game Club is going to be going through a bit of a 2.0 transformation, um, try and get some community uh you know, some community like back and forth, hopefully, like, you know, if, if people literally if one person voted on a game for us to play out of a certain amount of games, it would give us an opportunity to take our time with said game, talk about it, tweet about it, you know, with whoever's going to be on that game club, you know, as we're playing it, like almost like a, a, a journal entry, you know, get other players fa- feedback. And then by the time an episode drops, you as the listener will have felt like you're part of the club, so to speak, you know, it gives you time to play it. It gives, uh, you know, us, it kind of takes the pressure off of us of trying to have, you know, a game club episode in the tank um, every single month. And, you know, I could see it being like a bi-monthly thing where, you know, we really take our times with it, you know, because there for a while we were, we were, we were shelling out the game club episodes and that was a lot of fun. It really was just, just trying to meet a deadline and like finish a game by a certain time and like, you know all that that's great you know whenever new games would come out you know being able to have people like bush league gaming on and also the people from shared screens whenever we reviewed metroid like that was great but i think that you know as these thing types of things do things are evolving things are changing things are taking a different type of turn and you know I, i'm really really proud of like the first 20 30 shows we did of game club Um, But I'm ready to do something different, you know, and keep it fun, keep it engaging, you know, potentially continue to uh, sharpen our content a little bit, you know, with like time that it takes to really make something and like do it right, you know, like create short form content for it, like really make each episode the best it can possibly be on every platform. So it might seem like, oh, they're stopping stuff. Actually, when you think about it, there's actually going to be more. (laughs) Um, whenever things get into full swing, you know, it's, when you think about it's okay, it. Gabe. I mean, you can admit it. Arkham Origins broke Game Club. It, it really did. It did. It, did. <laughs> it, it did. broke. It broke. How Game long Club. have we been trying to get together and push this one on through? It's been months. I mean, it's been half it's been a year months. almost. I mean, it's been a long yeah. time. Because for, for reference, when did we go through the first three Arkham games? That was that was early like last, last summer. Year. Yeah, that was like last. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because yeah. it was hot outside for sure. So, yeah, you know, there's a lot of changes coming for a game club. And, you know, I'm excited that this this game just happens to be kind of the last one of those types of reviews <laughs> type thing. And, you know, if you love this game, obviously, whatever, you know, we'll get to it. But um, I just wanted to do a little bit of housekeeping since I don't know when the next game club episode is going to be. So there you have it. Um, so Ethan, you did not finish Batman Arkham Origins. I finished it back in 2015 is whenever I played it. Cause I beat Arkham Knight in 2015, whenever it came out, I was living in New York at the time. And, um, I remember like rushing to, uh, GameStop to buy a PS4 so I could play Arkham Knight cause it had like just come out. 
And it was funny because that was like one of the first things I ever bought with credit. So I was like, and I wasn't making very much money at all. So I literally had no plan to play, to, to pay this PS4 off at all. You know? So I was like, eh, whatever, you know, I'll figure it out. Um, but I was in a huge Arkham mood. I played through Arkham city a second time on the Wii U. Um, cause there was like a special edition that was released for Wii U. And, um, Obviously, we've gone through the Arkham games again, and I remember really, really liking Arkham Origins the first time I played it, you know, and like justifying a lot of reasons for it. And, you know, I thought it was I thought it was a good game, Uh, you know, like I I felt bad for dogging it because I had tried to play it once before and I'd felt bad for dogging it the first time I tried to play it. And then once I finished, it, I was like, actually, you know what? That was a good game. Well, it's kind of crazy to think that the game has aged. Like the game is almost 10 years old and I mean, it's, yeah, nine, it's nine years old, but that said, that said, um, I actually was impressed with how the game looks. I, yeah. I got to say that. Well, you played on Just PC, right? Gate. I played on PC um, with the NVIDIA or something X feature that they had rolled out with that particular game, um, which gives you like augmented, snow and things like that and the mm. way batman when he steps through the snow his footprints are there and they're like very you know there, there was some beauty in that game and oh. there were moments where i would pivot around batman standing on top of a building with snow falling around him and just kind of marveling it was that same feeling that i had when i first stepped into arkham knight and you're standing there on the edge of the building and when when the world finally opens up to you after all the initial you know getting getting into the game and the rain is coming down and you see it on the, you know, coming off the cowl and everything. Well, I had that same experience, just marveling at just how good it looked And it, it is, it is a beautiful game. And especially in the snowfall um, it's almost, I almost wish they had or could remaster Arkham city and do it with the same graphics. That would be, be an awesome. incredible experience, but yeah. So even though it is almost a decade old, there's a lot to be said, at least from from my perspective, PC gaming it uh, to say that it hold it still holds up really well. Yeah, well, and so I guess it's one of those things where uh, Nvidia they kind of do these like special remasters just for PC or like these special patches just for PC, and they don't do it with every game, but games that can benefit from it, they do. So I might have to visit it whenever it goes on sale you know, and at least just try it on PC because I played it on PS3 Mm. and that's a step back. It was tough. I mean, it was a toughie. I mean, it was, yeah, it was one of, I mean, it can still run. The PS3 can still run games. Great. Like Ratchet Mm -hmm. and Clank, like God of War games, like it can run games really well. And just to see just, it's so obviously unoptimized for the PS3, like dropping frames nonstop and like, you know, just a lot of texture issues and stuff like that. I mean, it yeah. wasn't, it wasn't the end of the world, you know, I mean, I still play on a freaking, you know, I'll play games that are 30 years. But old. when like, you, when you said it felt you, it, it aged and it yeah. felt like a decade old, it really did because your hardware was a decade old. Yeah, literally. Yes. Well, and I think, yeah. you know, and see, I that's like different to, because I got to play it in 2k Yeah, on a 2k monitor with the NVIDIA graphics yeah. turned to maximum. Right. And, yeah, it just makes even even 10 year old games can look very yeah. good, you know, well, yeah. in that kind of environment. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, even like on PC, like I was playing Half Life and I was like shocked at how good like it still was the original Half Life, like not the remake. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, man, this is like rad. You know, I see, I, I do have to admit, I have seen the perks and in, in PC gaming, you know. And I have enjoyed it. I still play my consoles religiously, but I yeah. do like I like PC gaming so much that I went I bought a gaming laptop, Ethan, and it has a uh, it has a 3060 in it and it runs games oh. really, really nicely. You should definitely play Origins on that at some point. You think so? I think if it goes so. on sale, if it goes on sale for like yeah. less than 10 bucks, I'll pick it up. Yeah, if but you I'm see out. it on Steam yeah. for, you know, one of their Thanksgiving or. Yeah. spring or whatever sales you definitely should pick it up because yeah. it does look gorgeous yes. yeah well yeah yeah um so let's get into the plot of this game a little bit basically this is a year two batman so it's kind of funny when you think about that because that is the same you know time period that the batman takes place and uh it 
basically Batman has to fight like basically every bad guy in Batman's arsenal. You know, I mean, there's there's there, there is kind of a cool twist, you know, in the game. Um, you know, it's heavily revolved, you know, it's heavily revolved around Black Mask. And I guess I, sh- I should say, like, if you're not wanting to be spoiled on Arkham Origins, like you may want to turn this off because I'm going to spoil it hard, like really hard. Um, last turn, last chance. Everyone dies. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, so basically, you know, Batman is trying to figure out this whole like Black Mask dilemma and he has to like go talk to Penguin, all this other stuff. And like there's he's trying to solve this murder. Well, it turns out that the person who's been masquerading as Black Mask is actually the Joker. The Joker has taken over Black Mask's crime syndicate. He is kind of like cementing his place as the, uh, you know, clown prince of Gotham, you know, the prince of crime, so to speak. And I I have to give the, the game props for that because it for the, the thing that this game does the best is that the plot is interesting and the things that you go do have purpose if you're a batman fan um and the way that things connect you know i like the only problem is that it does nothing inventive with with the plot or the story like there's nothing i mean it is the exact same i mean there are moments where i had to like think about what game i was playing because it feels like a carbon copy of arkham city like am i cutting out really bad you're just like smiling super bad or super good sorry no, I'm, 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 I'm listening to you and formulating my, my rebuttal. Okay, good. Um, there's a lot of things, you know, it, I feel like the, I think this is something that we talked about in Arkham city of just kind of the in between of the main points, you know, it can be kind of tedious at times, even within Arkham city where it's like, Oh my God, I got to fly all the way over there to do this thing. That takes 10 minutes, literally like the iceberg lounge. I did not like the, that. That is a cool place. I don't like going there and doing the stuff there. And every time I get to that point in Arkham city, I'm like, Ugh, like, I don't want to do this. Well, that happens almost immediately in Arkham origins where it's like, literally mm-hmm. the first thing you have to do is something kind of like that. It's like, man, I just want to beat the crap out of people. Like yeah. I feel like, are you referring to the ship? Yeah. Yeah, yes. exactly. Like the, yes. the ship. Yeah. yeah. The ship you go to at the very beginning of the game. I'm just kind of like, man, I feel there was a missed opportunity to, cause you know, he has all of his gadgets already. Everything like it mm-hmm. is Arkham city, Batman. You slowly get more upgrades just like you do in Arkham, you know, Arkham city. Yeah. But he is fully established. And that was one thing that kind of, really stuck out to me this time is he he can you know he gets his clock cleaned a couple of times but he there's a element of not not naivety but just um inexperience that is sorely lacking in my opinion like he it, takes experience and very much vigilante yeah totally very like, much on his own and that's yes. that's not the theme that you had from the previous games you had someone in your ear it, yeah. it, even alfred is different in this game yeah. alfred is more of a he's he's there he's a voice but you don't feel like it's you know team alfred or team batman it's yeah it's very much batman doing his own thing well and you know there is a little bit within the plot of you know alfred trying to tell batman like or bruce you know hey like if you don't like figure out what you want to do like you're going to go down a dark path like he mm-hmm. keeps warning bruce about all these things that mean nothing like <laughs> literally there we know where no this is point. going <laughs> yeah there's no point like to do it and it it, it makes no sense it, it is completely well it's redundant it's completely it, redundant yeah and I, I get it if if you wanted to release this game first because here's the thing i feel like if you would have released this game before arkham city it would be a completely different story in my opinion, like it would feel a lot different, but we didn't, that didn't happen, you know, whatever. The story, the things that happened, the voice acting is good in this game. There is good chemistry with some of the characters. I think some of the quests are interesting, like chasing down Firefly. Like I I thought that was fun, even though, even though they did that same thing uh, in Arkham Knight, (laughs) Arkham Knight, the exact same thing, Um, (laughs) you know, there was uh there was still you know 
good things in the game, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, they, they, they do. You said it's, it doesn't innovate. They do introduce the um, rewind. In, in, detective. In a, yeah, the, re, yeah. The detective, the, the, which would have been really handy in some of the Arkham Asylum and Arkham city scenarios, but Hey, you know, we're just going to, you know, Batman forgot that night, but you know, <laughs> well, you do it and you do do it in uh, Arkham, Arkham Knight at least once it, in Arkham Knight. But there again, Arkham Knight yeah. came out after this game. Yeah. So of course it's going to be there. And, yeah. um, you know, I didn't care much for the feature in Arkham Knight. Yeah, it was just kind of like, reviewed eh. it. Yeah. yeah, big deal. It was all and right. then in this one, there's a lot of a lot of the story comes out in those moments when you're being yeah. detective Batman, which is cool because that harkens back to what Batman was, you, yeah. know, you know, years ago. But in here, it, it man, it's just like in Arkham Knight. It was tedious to me yeah. anyway. Well, and it's it's kind of interesting because the like the structure of Arkham Origins isn't that much different than the structure of Arkham Knight. Like it's yeah. actually pretty similar. And um, I think for me, whenever I got to the cheetah boss, I don't even, I don't know if you got that far or no, it was uh, not Viper. Maybe it okay. was Viper. Here, here's what happened with me. Um, I took about three months to get to the ship. <laughs> And when I got out, I every time flew Ethan around turns the, every time he turns the game on, he's like, nope, I'm like, nope, I can't, I can't hang. <laughs> so so what I did when I once I got out of the ship, I ignored the game, what the game was wanting me to do and just flew around in, in as much as I could open world rooftop to rooftop and just just was Batman, you know, out knocking down bad guys and and just flew around and did that and once i had spent enough time doing that and looking around at the environment and exploring little nooks and crannies without furthering the story i turned it off and i haven't turned it on since so everything i know about, i know what the story does because i read it because mm -hmm. i was just not compelled to go back in and experience it yeah myself it, it is one of those things too like I Troy Baker does a great job of, you know, voicing the Joker. Um, like, it sounds like he's doing an impression of Mark Hamill, you know, and the dude that plays Batman, it sounds like he's doing like an impression of a it's, young it's Kevin fair. Conroy, you know, yeah, it's not it's bad, fair. but there's just enough off with it to where you're kind of like, yes, man, from from moment one when the yeah. game starts. And I was excited when I first I got started. Answers. <laughs> like, yeah, it's it just. It, you're right. It just a little bit off and it's like, mm, I'm not feeling the magic. I'm just not feeling the magic. And unfortunately for me, as I got a couple of hours into it, it didn't appear either. Mm -hmm. The magic didn't just appear. Yeah. It, 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 it just wasn't there. Well, and this might be petty, but you fight Deathstroke. Deathstroke was a huge selling point of this game, like a huge selling point. And you fight him like in two hours. Like he's mm -hmm. done. So like you fight yeah. him on the, the area I was talking about the ship and it's like, man, what a perfect opportunity to show Batman's like not badassery. You know what I mean? Like what a way to show his not naivety, like, as I said before, but just his inexperience, you know, there would have been plenty yeah. of opportunity to show him. And he does ultimately get kind of get beat up a little bit off the ship or whatever, but I just, for some reason that really left a bad taste in my mouth. I'm like, man, not only is this the most boring boss battle of all time, but this is just so underwhelming, you know? Yeah. And, 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 and since you broached it, let's, let's talk about the boss battles. I, I, I did go ahead and go on YouTube in preparation for podcasting about it, you know, just to look at some of the boss battles that are on there. And I'm in watching them. I'm, I feel grateful that I didn't go ahead and waste my time in it. Yeah, you know, because there wasn't anything terribly compelling about any of those bosses that I saw. Not at all like what you had in Night and Cities and Arkham Asylum, you know, because there you're fighting boss battles that, you know, frankly, I grew up on the animated series. Now I'm playing against those characters. Yeah. Here I'm playing against tier two villains, most of them, right? Yeah. With mm -hmm. the exception of Joker um still though I bane mean, you know bane yeah. is kind of bane was kind of cool and and the little bit of story that you had with bane that was intriguing but in the end um 
yeah, there wasn't anything about these bosses that I was just like, I'm really compelled to find out what happens here. No, because I know at the end of the night's going to come. No one's going to collect the bounty. Batman's going to move on. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, yeah. Batman's going to win again. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I I want to give this game props, you know, because they did, they essentially took like what felt kind of like the long Halloween and made it on Christmas, <laughs> you know, and that's kind of like the Batman game we got here. At the same time, it feels like Rocksteady literally just gave uh, WB Games Montreal like the code for Arkham City and said, here, like, whatever, you know, whatever you want to make with this. Obviously, we got to make Arkham Knight. So you we're whatever. busy with night. Yeah, yeah literally. We're, we got to make <laughs> Arkham Knight. Yeah. Um, and that's literally what it feels like. I remember playing the first time I played this game. I didn't beat it, but it was like the first time I played it. I'm like, man, this feels like literally a giant DLC for Arkham City like yeah kind of or or it did feel like a studio revisiting someone else's better work yeah exactly because frankly i i had problems not just with the story and how i was playing through it and how the world was being presented to me but i also had problems with like the uh the tree you know the tech tree the abilities tree yeah it took it was so different from what I was used yeah. to, and I did not care for nope. it. And so there was something else pulling me out of the enjoyment of this game. There the was too time. many precedents set before the games that, you know, whenever the old games came. I mean, <sighs> Arkham Asylum is a better game than this game. Like, I would agree. It's not even close, actually. And I mean, I mean, props for doing something different. Yeah, that's fine. But- but if still. it doesn't work, it, it, yeah. it is what it is. Well, and you know, like it's interesting, WB Games Montreal, they are developing the new Gotham Knights video game where supposedly Batman is dead. Spoiler alert, I will bet you literally $50 right now he's not dead. Um, he's just been captured by the Court of Owls and you have to save him. That's what the game is going to be about. Um, I saw some gameplay for Gotham Knights and I was just thinking to myself, this literally looks like a PS3 game. Like this doesn't look for me at least at all. Um, Nothing like what I thought it was going to be. Mm. And whenever I was playing Arkham origins this, this past time, it feels like kind of like what you're saying, like a different, a different studio develop developer going to like another person's work. It feels like an old game that got remastered by a different studio is what it feels like. Yeah. And it's like you can't you 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 recognize like oh these mechanics are supposed to feel x y and z way but they feel just a little off. You know, mm. this feels just a little off. And that's that, you know, that said though, I will say there was one thing that did stand out to me in the gameplay and that was the free flow the free flow combo. Oh. That system did feel like it had been improved on. Like even better than what I remember from Arkham Knight is it, it felt like it was easier to take on a group of enemies and, you know, I, I wasn't forgetting my combos, it, you know, as easily as it seemed like in Arkham Knight. So I will say if they did tinker with that, that's the direction. Yeah. Keep going with that because that yeah. is an improvement over the other games. I do remember that. Yeah. And I've heard people say that before too, like where the combat actually feels better, you know, to them in Ar- Arkham Origins, I could see it sharpened up a little bit for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, I guess it begs the question, like if someone loves the Arkham games, the, the core three, could you recommend this game to them? How would you, okay. like, how would you, how would you, I guess, quantify recommending you, this to somebody? If you are a hardcore Arkham fan, yes, you need to play this. I played it because Gabe, you're a hardcore Arkham fan. And yeah. you said, you have to give this a shot. Yeah. I gave it a shot and I, it didn't land with me mm-hmm. and it's not going to land with everybody. No, nope. whether they say they're a hardcore Arkham fan or not, um, because there are, I don't know. It's replaying those games as we did last year or the year before um, both. It, it, I was able to harness and relive a lot of the nostalgia of those games that I love from a decade before. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I went into it thinking this is going to be more of the same, but it's not. So if you loved the Arkham games, 
give Origins a chance, but know that you are getting something from a different studio, different developers, and it's going to have a different feel to it. And so be prepared for that because I was not. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a great way to put it. Um, I think for me, it people who defend this game tooth and nail, it very much is the same people that are saying Attack of the Clones is good. Um, I'm not saying Attack of the Clones is bad, but I certainly would never in a million years say it's a good movie. It's not good cinema. No, it's just it's just OK. And I think it's a good popcorn movie. I think that's kind of where I'm at with this game, too, is I don't think it falls into the realm of being a bad game. I don't think it falls into the realm of being a good game. I think it falls in the realm of being just OK. And and that's OK. No, that's brilliant. No, it's go- it's going to be a great, a great game for a niche niche yeah, audience. Totally. Yeah. It, I loved it the first time I finished it and I was like, man, that was great. Yeah. But when a game can't pull me back in, you know, it yeah, I mean, it, it is what it is. And that's know. and that is the drawback of this game. Mm-hmm. Uh it's not because immersive, it really it's not immersive exactly. Yeah. yeah, there was at no point did I feel like okay, I I feel the momentum building here and I'm ready to go along with it. I yeah. never felt that and I uh, I, I didn't check it. I probably pushed three to I'm between three and four hours of gameplay in. If you haven't pulled me in three to four hours in, you're not going to you're not getting me. That's a lot. I mean, it's a lot. Yeah. I, you know, I, and I think about games like Death Stranding, which is uh, reached a bigger audience than most people thought it would. But that is a very niche game. It reviewed poorly. It's one of my favorite games I've ever played. And I still revisit it like I'm still playing. I'm playing through it right now again. And I love that. I love that game. And people who don't love that game and say like, oh, there's no action in it. And like, you know, like it's so weird and blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, that was exactly what it was designed to be was this way. Um, so if you don't like that, that's fine. It's not for you. You can't say that with Arkham Origins. It was designed. It has the Arkham name on it. It was designed to mm-hmm. replicate There's an expectation. Yeah, yeah, it was designed to hit that bar that the other games do, and it just doesn't. Ethan, did you know that this this game? Whenever it released, it had a multiplayer mode. I didn't. So yeah, the multiplayer. I read in this that game, it did, and I was like, oh, I totally missed that. Yeah. So <laughs> the way it worked was one person played as Batman, and then there were like a team. There was like a team of thugs trying to find and kill Batman. So Batman would like go around and uh you know like take everyone out just like a you know in stealth mode just like in stealth mode yeah and yeah. i want to say that the servers for um the multiplayer died within like the first year of the game not out. surprising like at they all. shut them down hold on because honestly the you there are those guys that love stealth mode i like yeah. stealth mode for a few moments the few moments that you needed to get through a level but i could not see myself playing hours of multiplayer with stealth mode it just wasn't going to happen yeah it's okay so i was wrong it th- the servers were up for three years that's still really short that's not good for for a top top tier game yeah well and what was so interesting was like the gameplay i remember watching gameplay and thinking like wow that looks really cool it looked like gears of war or like uncharted you know behind cover fire you know or even mass effect and you know running away from batman you know and i remember trying to like load into a match and it was just almost impossible to play because it it was like literally unplayable it wasn't done like it just wasn't finished so i don't know i I don't have a ton more to say about this game i thought it was i thought it was fine um if you had to guess what metacritic has to say what do you think metacritic what do you think the meta score is I would put it somewhere in the sevens, maybe. Yeah. Okay. The meta score is seven, four. The meta the user score is seven, six. So user score was slightly higher than slightly. Yeah. Okay. But this yeah. is one of those rare occurrences where the actual like scores kind of match up. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And, and I wonder, I wonder how much of that is um, with night coming out origins benefited from the hype of that next game coming maybe. out in the series yeah maybe because it's all that it's all you had 
you you were either you were playing city waiting for night or you were playing origins waiting for night uh, hot take I, I just i think this game would have been way better off coming out after arkham knight yeah personally you know absolutely this game coming out three to four years after arkham knight had concluded that that yeah. trilogy this game would have been a lot better yeah i mean i just think like if you had this game come out in like 2018 it would have been better the multiplayer support would probably have been better mm-hmm. it would have been a perfect opportunity to, to, to set up um montreal's new game you know you would play as batman the first game then you'd play as the gotham knights the second game uh which they haven't said if this is actually like a true sequel to that game i don't think it is but that would be cool if it was um yeah i just no uh, no the the sequel to this game was supposed to be suicide squad (laughs) (laughs) because the suicide squad's rock steady right it is. It is. Yeah. Rock yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, was there supposed to be a suicide? Are you? Do you know something? I don't know. Well, I just I was reading and and had seen on YouTube where, uh, who is it? Deathstroke. Deadshot. Deadshot. Deadshot, Deadshot is yeah. approach is approached at the end of the credits of this game. Credits roll. Deadstroke. He, he's approached and, and asked to to join the Suicide Squad. And oh. so it's like, there's your your Marvel. The, the, so you're thinking next time yeah. we see another game come out is is it going to be, be yeah. anyway i don't know if Anyways. it's supposed to tie into another game or if they're just insinuating here's the start of the suicide squad but in either case yes uh time and a little distance from the the og series would have benefited this game yeah, i think it would have and to answer my own question i I think if someone asked me, is like, oh, did you ever play Arkham Origins? I would say yes. And if they asked me how it was, I would say um, it's okay. Like, it's okay. Play it only if you really want to and play it on a PC. <laughs> don't play it on yeah. PS3. Yeah. You know, because don't retro I mean, it. <laughs> my Vita, my Vita runs games better than my ps3 ran that game like it was just yeah. it blew my mind it was crazy but anyways um ethan uh i would like to officially mark this as being the first episode of game club where we will not be giving a numbered score oh okay okay um, i can yeah i can be okay with that yeah so uh no more numbered scores in general actually um like so what do we do do we do we say we recommend we don't recommend what are we doing um yeah i mean i kind of just did it you know what i mean like you said would you reckon let me get okay gun to your head right now the nazis are gonna kill you unless you answer this question okay should people play arkham margins look or no we are we already talked about it you ask them did you like the other arkham games answer is yes Okay, play it. If the answer is no, stay away from this yeah. one. Yep. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're not going to find anything else that no. you know profound or. And I'm a year one Batman fan. I love that story. Yeah, but it's and just this so... feeds into it. But kind of, it doesn't feel like it at all. Like, uh, yeah, you know what I mean. It doesn't feel like a year one Batman to me. You know what the advantage of year one Batman is, at least like the animated movie is it's an hour and a half and then it's done yeah this is 12 to 14 yeah. hours and yeah. you're not going to get those back no you it's, won't and it's going to be monotonous and you're going to be like man i like this better. i like this game better the first time whenever rocksteady did it <laughs> That's right. you know what i mean <laughs> like two other times yes. but anyways yeah anyways all right. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of Game Club, Ethan. Um, thank you for playing what you did play of the game. Sorry, I didn't hit. I immediately felt bad whenever I was playing the game and I realized I had recommended and made you waste hey, three or four hours of your life. On nah, you know what? At least I didn't have to drive the Batmobile. <sighs> Dude, don't even get me started on that freaking thing. <laughs> I'm actually mad now. I'm actually like. All right, we got to wrap this up. Sorry, I'm, to, I'm, I'm triggered, Gabe. We need to wrap this mic- one. Yeah, I'm yep. going to start punching my microphone. All right. Um, where can people find you, Ethan? Uh, they can find me on Twitter uh, at Ethan Maestri. Um, Go check out uh, the other podcast that I do with Ryan Mazzocco. That's um, uh, Gene Roddenberry's Andromeda. Uh, 
andromedaseries.podbean.com is where you'll find that podcast drive back tonight in andromeda series podcast it's with uh, ryan and myself so uh check us out there on twitter at andromeda pod and facebook if you're on there too and you've been moonlighting as a uh, sci-fi malady guest correct dude i have had a great little stint for the month of may on sci-fi malady uh, okay say that because now they got to okay. go find the punch counterpunch episode where we're going to talk about that there you go bingo bingo bongo yeah but it's right. been yeah check me out over there raving lunatic media.com there you have it boom um ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for tuning in uh until next time thank you for being a part of the club i love you say goodbye ethan adios folks <laughs>